Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you. The accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make them establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And of course, I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I'll introduce you to my wonderful guest, Jane Jorgensen. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching the show live at a later date as it really means a lot to both of us to connect with like-minded people. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy. And I'm a guide who helps you remember your divine presence so that you can heal your past, find your purpose, create your future, so that you can expand your consciousness, understand your spiritual path, get clarity on your next steps, and take charge of your destiny, so that you can fill your purpose in this lifetime. Now, each episode of the show covers various themes of the journey, a mini guided meditation, like angel oracle card reading, with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Jan Jorgensen, about the importance of lightening up and the divine plan. Now, Jan has developed an expertise and mastery of the vibrational, intentional consciousness field, and is a leader in the divine feminine community, singer and ritualist. Opening speaker, workshop provider, she insists she is an educator, sound healer, women's empowerment coach, and has led sacred tours to France. She developed and produced SOAR, SOAR, women's leadership events internationally, created voice release, and delivers a weekly Be The Light meditation. Now, she weaves science and spirit masterfully to inspire and support the new leaders and visionaries and networks extensively to create community. She presently leads women's circles, launched the Queen's Caravan Spiritual Walkabout Tour to work with women in their community nationwide. A TV and radio host, Jan interviews new paradigm initiators to inspire co-creation and is frequently interviewed for innovative approaches and tools for humanity. Now, with testimonials such as, I've been enjoying the expanded amazing benefits of our second session together, and wondered if I could schedule another as I continue to rise up and through, and my art, oh my God, my art is turning to and moving into a very high place. My body craves these sessions. It's better than massage, in a way. Spiritual soul food that has the physical lasting vibrations. Thank you so much. And her singing releases all tension and relaxes me like I've never experienced in my life. My voice, bio and sound journey are amazing. I feel it deep inside of myself so much that it brings tears of joy to my eyes. The sound bath was beyond what words can express. I was reborn and filled with rapture, peace and delight. I did not want the state of blessedness to end. So without further delay, hello, Jan, and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? Thank you, Ray. I'm always great when I, I'm in the company of my uh, tribe here with you, angelic realm. And I see we have your little icon up here, angels. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Angels. Angels are everywhere. And they're with us all through the show. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind everyone that you can not only share this video, but you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts as both Jen and I want to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. So Jan, why don't you tell us more about your journey and the importance of lightening up and of course the divine plan? Well, those are my... Uh... Uh, core topics. And I love that you said that this is interactive and we'll be answering questions um, because this is something that you were, you and I, we were born and lived pretty much regular lives. And we had no idea of the stunning uh, work and missions that were laid out for us by our angelic selves. And here we are. I often say, uh, when I meet someone like you, it's instant recognition and comfort and and joy that we're we are in the etheric in our angelic consciousness, and we are reorganizing and reorienting things to remember, to remember, 
we were born and we had to take that veil of forgetting. And um, then we have our personal journey that helps us on the trajectory to kind of figure out our puzzle piece for the divine plan. And so each one of our uh, past is unique, but there's some central themes that we can really help each other with. And, and I laughingly say we weren't born with a um, manual of no. how to do this, how to do this. So it's like serendipitous on the path and the synchronicities. But now I must say I just celebrated my 70th birthday in perfect queen style. Looking back, I can see that it was all about feeling safe. Mm. Feeling safe to speak the truth, even though I, I feel and knew other people didn't want to say the truth, even if they felt it or thinking it. And that was my first hint of I'm in the wrong place that <sighs> I was three or four years old. And I looked at my dad and now I know it's an angelic a projector in the human design system. I would merge with him. And he was thinking one thing, but saying something different. I thought, why would any human ever step outside of his own truth? And it, it became my path to understand why people would need to avoid truth. And of course, it is the fear-based social systems of control, domination, and patterning to avoid pain and to move into our wounding. So my father was like so many other people in the world. He was just the first one I felt it with. And then I would watch authorities and I felt like that little girl in the movie who wanted to say the king's wearing no clothes. Yes. And, it, you know, now here we are, we're grown up, we're saying they're all naked. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. This is ridiculous. The charade of people appearing as benevolent authorities when they're truly watching their own pocketbook and they are bought off by forces, special interest forces. So I grew up in a family of 10. And so everything about pushing me into this trajectory, finding my voice was perfect because there's no room at the table for the sixth child to get her voice in. Yeah. And I had older sisters who were very strong and beautiful, and they would put makeup on me. And uh, that's how I learned to be a girl. But if it came for me to say something, especially if it was different, if it wasn't shopping makeup or dieting, to just say something, it's like they couldn't hear me. Mm. It's like there was death. It was like there was no place for me at the table in my own home. And from a young age, I, I remember wanting to do the Ouija board. And I realized that I had no mentor. I had no direction that helped me understand that my interdimensional nature was normal for me. Yeah. But interestingly enough, my good, uh, perfect Catholic mother when I was about 19 and I was studying Paramahansa Yogananda, all the first stepping stones to understanding expanded consciousness, I asked my mom, the good Catholic mom who raised eight kids, I said, hey, mom, what were you reading every night? She always had a pile of books. She had glasses and a little light. And she said, Edgar Casey." Oh. <laughs> and Seth speaks. And Seth speaks. And so it's almost like my mom was this guiding light for me. And I remember I could ask a question of any nature and anything. And she always knew the truth. Well, she was a Stanford graduate school graduate. She was an army officer in Iwo Jima. Can you imagine the courage wow. to be there? No refrigeration, a dietitian making food under fire. But my mother, um, always told the truth and was soft-spoken and people will come to her for advice. So I feel like I grew up with a very wounded masculine who you might say narcissistic qualities where I didn't feel safe. I knew something was off. And of course, who can blame him? Yeah. The trauma we've been through. 
And then this saintly mother of a few words who I felt so safe with. But I still didn't feel safe uh, to speak my truth. And I had progressive uh, anxiety. I remember in uh, seventh grade, I gave a speech and I was so nervous. I was tearing papers, my speech and throwing it the whole time. And then as nursing, I became a nurse and I just didn't feel safe in my body. I felt like as an angelic being, I was dissociating a lot. And I just didn't feel safe. So it wasn't until um, I became a nurse and I started understanding what anxiety is and that you don't feel safe. But I didn't, I didn't experience safety until I wanted to be a singer and speaker, of course. That's part of our, uh, our puzzle piece is what you want to do. It's usually the thing that has the greatest gifts for you. So yeah. I was anxious. But I always wanted to be a singer. So I had a cabaret show in San Francisco. And I had a little uh, music stand. And I would say only love. Because I knew if I fully moved into love. And I knew nothing about New Age concepts at that point. I just knew I didn't want to be anxious and embarrass myself. So I would merge into the feeling of complete love. And then something would scare me and I would choose love again. I would choose love. And I could see when I consistently chose love, everyone in the audience would relax and smile. And I felt like it was a love fest. And I said, this is how I want to be all the time. So my kids were little. Um, and I said, now what do I want to do? Cabaret singing was done. And someone said, well, why don't you sing at the hospice bedside? And I thought, for dying people, that's an interesting audience. <laughs> yeah. But, well, they can't go anywhere. <laughs> and and, and, it, and it, it took that monitoring out of me, that ego part, because I found... When I was singing, I was in such service that I lost my sense of self in ego monitoring of how am I doing. And that's where I consistently could unzip and move into this space of absolute no fear. And being a nurse, I could see their hands relax. And just like the audience, they, and I said, wait a minute, I have the power to release fear by choosing to myself first. And I didn't understand. Now that I understand, I became a teacher at the Sound and Consciousness Institute and mastered the biofield, intentional consciousness, choosing my state of emotions and broadcasting that out and teaching other people as well. But those hospice experiences led me into a realm of if I can help people release fear of dying, what is the greater fear? Public speaking. Fear of living and stating our authentic truth. And I said, I got to figure this out. So I actually moved sideways from my 23-year marriage to a wealthy orthodontist. We had a villa, Ferrari, everything, a circumscribed life. I call it the Teflon life. I never had to really feel or heal, or do any deep journeying. So I walked away from that life. It took a lot of courage because I wanted to find out how to break the fear code so women could speak up and not be in fear of speaking their truth. So it led me towards studying vocal profiles. And I got this program called The Voice Bio, and I'd been a registered nurse. And I could look at 26 disease states, compare a vocal profile to, and see energetically how a person was matching up in their energy field, and they would eventually have that disease, most likely, unless it was intervention. Our voice is a frequency profile of our thoughts, our history, our fears, our assumptions, our wounding, 
our expectations of how people will treat us. And I actually could see that you could make a voice print. So your voice print as you speak comes out in the world, but it's got all your junk in it. So in other words, if a woman comes and she thinks men betray her and hurt her or she's not pretty enough, she won't attract a really nice, calm, balanced guy. She'll attract the guy, the narcissist, who will betray her and hurt her. And that dance will continue until she absolutely heals or goes in and, and does something different to break that pattern. Gets so tired of it, she finally lets it go. We get her vocal patterns, of course, from life and from our parents. Okay. Before we're born, our mother is speaking and sounding, and our own body is undulating and moving. And by the time we're born and make our first sounds, we're imitating the same amount of attention, the same amount of story in our voice as our mother. My mother held back. She was very spiritual. She was afraid to say her spiritual beliefs. I grew up being afraid to say, I see it differently. And my God, you're all in some charade here. What's the story? <laughs> I mean, really. And um, it's funny because my, uh, I'll back up this last week and I had my 70th birthday and I pretty much do what I want. And I have my older sister came as a guest and she said in front of the whole group, Jan was different. She thought different. She acted different. She says, now that I'm older, I'm a therapist. She explains to me how she sees things and sees how healing can work. And she says, you know, it really makes sense. She just said, I had no perceptual container to understand my own sister all those years. I'm saying this because people in your life, they won't get you. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't continue being yourself based on their speed. They need you to be this light and to be this truth so that they can move along and it won't happen unless you are shedding the light and truth. And it takes courage. My sister for years said, I don't know what you're talking about. And she would change the topic. I had a neighbor say to me one day, I had just met her and I was kind of testing on new age things. And the next time we got together, she says, hey, listen, let's make a deal. No woo woo talk. <laughs> it's not my tribe. So here in this program with you nodding and the people listening, we are activating the remembrance and claiming what we know and who we are. We are messengers here and we are to bring this light. So every Wednesday morning, I do a meditation called Be the Light. And Spirit just brings through some delightful little du jour. People come live on it and they might have a problem. And I don't even have to think of it. And I just come through with some nice little 40 minute, you know, get back. And sometimes if no one comes, Spirit will say, Jan, you're doing this one for you, for yourself. Yeah. We need reminders. We need to get on our horse. And forget how fast other people are going on the horses or if they're not even going. Okay. Because becoming this light and saying the truth creates streaks of new potentialities that wouldn't have happened if you didn't open your mouth. Okay. Because what we're doing is we are streaking, streaming light, sparks, new ideation that by our very presence is creating new realms of trajectories and potentials energetically. Just as I said, our voices are like this and attract. When your voice is like this, you're attracting more people. You come together. We angels now. We laughingly, we see each other. We see our skill sets. And we say, oh, well, what miracles have you created today? Because that's within our skill set. We have to, we have opened our perceptual glasses to see. We are visitors here. We see each other. And it's time to polish our toolkits and to bring through the visions, the ideas, and to pull apart that fear from our voice and to say it. 
Why is it important to get the fear out? Because if we say it with fear, our biofields bathe other people with a sense of, I can't trust this woman. She's scared of what she's saying. And that's what I experienced my whole childhood. I could read their reactions. I could feel they were, that angelic truth and light was too much for them. And so now I say exactly what spirit tells me to say to people right up to the edge of their believability and perceptual system and a little bit more. And then I make a joke <laughs> just so they're comfortable. Oh, good. She's not too crazy. I don't have to write her up. Don't talk <laughs> to too much stuff. So it's a, it's a pretty big job we have to be here as normalized, believable, credible humans constantly going to the edge, shedding light for new creations. So I did to spirit, okay, well, how can we get rid of this fear? I can track it. I can look at it. And then Don Esty showed me the portal where I can watch the fluid undulations of the frequency mandalas of a voice and help a person see how they relate to themselves by certain patterns, their intimate circle and the outer world. And I can tell a woman mentally, physically, and emotionally, what percent they are out of alignment with the words and the message they are trying to convey to others. If you are feeling and thinking something else, just like my father, but saying something, how are you going to manifest workmates, clients, partners? You're betraying yourself. So how do you remove the fear of being your authentic self and saying what's the truth so that a broadcast away people can hear it, listen, digest it, and you can be the leader you're meant to be? Well, of course, I couldn't figure that out in the third dimension because there was no answer. So I said, no. Spirit, show me. So an archangel came in and said, Jan, you're going to sit like this. And here's the person. Okay. Here's their voice. They're going to sound it like, oh, or on a vowel sound. And here's their betrayal thing. And you're going to come in and you're not going to be the perfect of their holographic per you are going to match the first time that the father scared you when you're three years old and you've got that, I can't talk around authorities, men are scary. It's all unconscious is what they're saying. But you can go to it sonically and sing, go right down to that person's body, kind of find that frazzled, nervous trigger, give it a phase shift. Everything is vibration. And because I can merge with people, my voice would go, um, and I would move it through their voice. I would slide through their frequency into their body and say it was a three-year-old woman with a mean dad. I would feel her three-year-old saying, I'm so scared. I don't know what to do. I'm just going to put up a defense. I'll never talk to men that you make a lot of decisions in that moment of terror. And I unvibrated out. And that person, the look on their face of like, I'm safe. It's gone. I'm empty of that. So it's magical. The archangel said, you're just going to sing right into it and you're going to dissolve it. So a lot of other healing methodologies work the same way. Follow the thought, go in, dislodge it. But since I'm about the voice and I was a singer and I actually took anthroposophical pure tone singing for 30 years and I had a five five octave range wow float the tone etherically and I thought why am I spending uh, four years of focused therapeutic singing with German masters to learn to float the tone so I knew just how subtle to go into that throat and unlock it with the tone and move it and stretch it and then boom with my voice so my voice is like a surgeon is the best nursing tool I have. So I work with voice release individually. It works just as good on Zoom because it's etheric. In fact, it's easier. You don't have to get in your car. I do Zoom. It's my specialty. It's what I bring to the world. I got a PhD last July. Can voice release uh, remove fear from the voice of the awakening divine feminine? And, and I did research 
subjects and you know everything you have to do yes. but the reason i got the phd is it's open doors to more uh critically thinking groups yes i can bring something expanded angelic consciousness into a group in a way that they can hear it that's the only reason i got the phd is i'm going to go speak for instance american comprehensive energy psychology in phoenix coming up and last year i was on the waiting list this year first place so sometimes you do these things in the third dimension to get degrees or whatever uh, because it makes us more credible more relatable and uh, the information is digestible in certain ways so I'm glad for everything I did. It was hard work. I felt unseen. I felt underfunded. I felt unsung. But now I'm my own champion. And um, something happened. Another thing to put uh, my puzzle piece. I almost died two years ago. And I was that sick. Wow. I had to go on five heart medications. And I was dying of black mold poisoning. And I didn't know it. It was in the walls of the house. And, and I thought I had neurologic, I mean, everything with toxicity. Oh my God. So I started going out to drier places one month at a time, and I call it the Queen's Caravan Spiritual Walkabout Tour. Little did I know that I would be going into communities where women who didn't have their voice, I do voice release. And then if I'm there and they didn't understand what I was talking about, we do painting intentional creativity painting i got credential in that or i just do a sound bath and people move stuff out so i'm on my fifth tour coming up and just today i got a notice that i have a funder for this tour uh so it's the first time and i actually asked last week sometimes you have to do things in three dimension this is a fundraising campaign this is the artwork that people can see this is a real thing. This is what I'm going to spend it on. I'm going to set up an accounting system and be accountable. And this delightful being said today, I'll write you a check for the whole tour. Wow. I know. So I asked for it. And I didn't have any uh, unconscious thing saying I didn't deserve it. So the queen's thing is not to be a queen in the old sense. It's to be a queen of your domain, your queendom, your place. Right now I'm in my she shed. It's so tiny I can touch both. <laughs> I am the queen of this domain and I choose my energy field, my mood, what I deserve and who I am. And this voice release process has helped me to say things that I didn't feel comfortable saying before. And now at age 70, I have a true strong vehicle uh, to help other women yeah and you definitely wouldn't you know if you were to look at you you wouldn't actually say you were 70 so you know obviously obviously it's the angelic energy that that keeps you looking young soft focus <laughs> I, use every tool I can get <laughs> yeah that that as well but even without a soft focus you wouldn't you wouldn't see you wouldn't have said you uh you were you were you were 70 um definitely uh, uh no I, this it's definitely when you work with the angelic realms you do yeah. stay you stay you stay a lot younger you but, do. but i'm kind of like guessing you know um uh, the fact that you can when you're uh you can understand what people are saying uh you know is different to what they're thinking i bet your i bet your children were kind of like they couldn't get away with anything well yeah true <laughs> <laughs> I, knew, I knew if my son said i didn't eat that cookie and then i saw the half eaten cookie put underneath the workbench i'd go hmm how could I do this in a way he doesn't feel suffocated? You know, how can I allow him to, uh, you know, come forward with the truth? I did it. Well, I have to say, I didn't know I had this gift until I say I was in nursing school and I was changing a dressing on a pretty big wound on a leg and I'd come out sweating. And, and the other nurse say, what? And I say, well, my leg hurt so bad while I was doing the dressing. I said, you don't feel what people are going through? She says, no, Jan. 
And so that, and then I just kind of watched and then I found out I was a projector. If people don't know who you are in the human design system, I am a projector. I'm pretty empty until I'm sitting here next to Ray and I'm feeling Ray's aura and I am relating information in alignment with our agreements and who you are and what to bring forth. Projectors are 15% of the population. And we're here to bring truth and light, irregardless of the external effects. So um, it wasn't until I was 50, I realized I was a projector. And so I really felt left out. I yeah. felt uninvited because people didn't want to know it all. And, and now I know I don't know it all. I'm saying what your higher self wishes they could say to you if you could pick up the phone and talk. So people can be annoyed and think uh, the projectors or busybodies have all the answers. Well, we're playing your movie. I have no agenda or attachment to fixing or changing. I mean, I, let's say I used to do that a lot and try to be, you know, helpful and sneaky yeah. ways without people asking. But um, it, it was in my uh, 50s. It, it took quite a while for me to understand spiritual hygiene, the rules and the laws. And actually, that's when I taught voice healing. It's now Globe Recording in San Francisco, foremost uh, sound healing school, where I learned a lot of times the hard way by doing the opposite of the easy way. I truly learned. And I had to also decide and discern who was full of it and who had some new age platform just to sign you up for an expensive thing versus actual true channels. And the people that I use now, if I get balled up emotionally and can't see it, I even don't allow myself to 100% believe what they're saying because everyone on this earth plane is wearing perceptual goggles and I need to go calm, expand and hear and feel and see that truth for me in that moment. And that's right. Yeah, yeah, ab absolutely. I mean, human design, I'm a generator, so. That's good. You have lots of energy. I'm a short hitter. <laughs> yes, I, I and to, um, you know, and I didn't really, really understand that my, myself until I found out I was a generator why um you know when when i gave people hugs why they would just cling on for so long because obviously i'm giving out that um energy. Uh, spiritual energy angelic energy they were literally just taking it um yes. but it wasn't affecting me at all because i just keep that energy just keeps just keeps on coming the ever ready batteries my partner's a generator and sleeping next to him vectors <laughs> <laughs> we need to sleep by ourselves because we're like spools of thread where the thread just gets off and then we can get very empty so i'm a short hitter and then i rest and then chocolate for the rest <laughs> oh yeah totally and actually just what you're saying could talk about i have a feeling then that an ex-partner of mine might have been a projector because when I slept next to him I literally was able my mind would just clear and I I didn't have all those thoughts constantly going on and I and mm -hmm. I used to have a blank mind so so yes. that's, so he so he probably was oh, this was before I even knew about human design was probably a projector because he was literally taking in all my stuff they go well together projectors and generators uh, because the projector, as my partner would say, we're always right. Why? Because it's not jam talking. It's just, it's a, you know, sources is like a computer system. I saw it one time. Here's this little ball of truth. And here are millions of consciousness on stadium. So when I ask, all this information comes in. It's like a little ticket. This. That's it. It's not just one. Sources everywhere experiencing and uh, allowing and creating. And so the information to come in and what's the best thing to say or be or how to be present in this moment. And that's why it used to make me so anxious because it had nothing to do with the external operational world with the way I was processing. And I learned I had to let go. I actually couldn't think of what I was doing or saying that I had to uh, stop thinking and just allow and feel it and then 
at angel speed, the potential words are like all these ping pong balls. And because angel time is so much faster than humans, these words can drop in. And if I'm doing a meditation, it's taking a combination of everyone that will listen or is listening to that moment of exactly phonically, energetically hitting the nail on the head of what their system needs to have a spark of light and to become more light. I trust it. I trust it so implicitly that I just open my mouth when I'm doing this, not being regular Jan. In fact, two times I've fallen asleep and I woke up and I look around and I, where am I? And I am still talking. And the people say, I didn't miss a word. And Spirit said, don't you see? It's through you, Jan. Do not take credit. It's the Spirit. So I'm a telephone operator. And if people want to hear the truth about themselves, how many people do? What percent um, of the population? Exactly. Not, 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 not many people do want to hear the truth about, you know, hear the, hear the truth. <laughs> it, it's pretty gentle. Don't worry. I, I really, the people who get mad at me have entities, I have to say. If I have a client and they start fighting what I'm saying, fighting what I'm saying later, you charge me money, you're mean to me, whatever. I just, I see the acting out of that entity trying to make me feel, to hurt my confidence, to, 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 to interfere and hurt my flow. But I see, I can feel the vibration of it. I can feel it. And they have an entity for a reason, you know, they're on their journey. They need to walk with the, you know, that interference for a while. And actually, uh, on our journey of remembering our pure core, I have attracted so many unusual dark instances in my life to show me the opposite, to show me how easy a human soul can be co-opted in their consciousness sideways. Even channelers sometimes think they're channeling Archangel Michael. And I'll see this little side monkey part coming in, working with the ego of that channeler. It's not Archangel Michael. You can feel it. Trust your feelings. Yeah, absolutely, totally, you know. And yeah, you know, when I'm sort of like in the flow of, of stuff or, you know, when I do guided meditations for people, etc., it's not me that, that's, that's, that's doing it. If I consciously try and think about it, it's, completely, it's just completely different. But when I'm doing the cards or talking to people about angels and stuff like that, it's not me talking. It, you know, it is the angelic energies um, talking through me. Right. Um, for for what the people um, around me need to hear at that at that moment in time. But if I was to step and think, okay, what am I going to say? Forget it. Forget it is right. This is a picture I give people. You know those hourglasses of, ta- of sands of time. They come just like this. And so every time I say, I got to open that up to let the sparkly, you know, ping pong balls, truth come in. If I'm going to stay like this, the way I was born and the way the authorities, the churches and everyone would like me to be so they can control this part, but we never lost the right. And so I have a very simple, it's three steps. I call them be the light. And this is it. I ask and intend to set a sacred space. Take a deep breath through the nose and out through the mouth. And then I just simply open this up and I allow myself to feel that connection with source. And you can even hear the change in my voice. Grounded and full. And you just do it every day till it's a muscle memory. And then I feel my angelic guides coming in. And if you could, if we had a little, you know, we measure oxygen, I swear to God. Uh, I wish we had uh, frequency meters to see where our frequencies are going. I used to, when I was teaching in different emotional states, I would go put my hand and get my aura picture taken, right? Yeah. So I would be purple would be green. And one day it was all pur- purple and blues with the big ball of golden light trying to get through. And I felt like I wouldn't let the light through. 
and then something twisted the vibration and oh, I felt there. And so I ran down this amount chest. I took a picture, it was pure gold with the halo, with the halo. So I ran it down to my teacher, my spiritual teacher in the next course. Look, look at me. And she says, Jan, Jan wants to report something. She said, that's the beginning stages of Christic consciousness. You had a breakthrough over 732 hertz. She says, but. If you had any negative thoughts, that all goes away. You have to stay positive and open that up and connect it all the time, all the time. So that's why we want to be the light, because the divine plan counts on us being this light. I love the Eiffel Tower, you know, the yeah. tower of light bringing heaven to earth now. If we have enough Eiffel Towers, what could happen to Earth? Oh, my God. It'll be amazing. That's what we're doing. That's why we're having these broadcasts, hoping to bring some light, remembrances so people aren't scared to be who they are and speak the truth. More of these. And suddenly, the divine plan is for lacy like grid of Earth to hold enough light that fear disarms itself. Remember I said, if the vibration coming out is fearful, it brings fear in other people. If vibration coming out of me, the tuning fork, is completely self and wholesome, it makes other people drop their armor, their guns, they're disarmed. You know, I had a million frogs out there singing, and they just went completely quiet. They did. Listen to that. I know it's 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 beautiful. It's, it's it's absolutely it's absolutely amazing, um, you know, with the voice and the energy, um, you know how you know how it can create. You know, I think it is what they say, isn't it, that um, the human body um, music is so important to yes. our, to our to our vibration. I mean, obviously with water, and obviously water responds to, to the vibration, but how amazing music is for our our growth our soul for how we feel you know when you know when we want to be uplifted we find that joyful song to help raise 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 our vibe raise our vibration which i which i think is you know absolutely amazing of course um sound healing yes um, with with bowls and stuff is absolutely amazing but if people can use their voice to do it i absolutely. think that that is so 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 important and that so as you know I do mini guide meditations and angel oracle card readings and each week I like to ask my guests what they would like me to do for themselves and those watching so Jan would you like me to do a mini guide meditation or pull an angel oracle card for you and everyone I love oracle cards and I can't wait to see what you funny bring. enough I have the cards in my hand <laughs> I'm very rarely without without cards. So when I do the cards, I do the cards for what you need to know for your highest good at this moment in time. Because even though I work with the past, um, when we go into the past, it's to heal, to learn from it so that we come fully back to the present. And when I work with people in the future, it's so uh, they can understand the future, know the steps they need to take so they come back to the present so they don't worry. So let's Beautiful. see. What does Jan and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good at this moment in time? Okay, we'll go with that one, shall we? Yes. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> That's a good one. Answering the call. The time is now. Oh, my goodness. That's it. How perfect is that card then? I mean, that literally just jumped out. Um uh you, you don't know for it so you know it is you know answering the call the time is now but it's also when you think about answering the call it's using the voice to answer right. the call I'm that's here. i remember <laughs> exactly so for jan it's kind of like what you're doing is so important now and the fact that you've opened that doorway and you're stepping through and doing this work um, you know, it's it's absolutely brilliant. And for those that are watching this, you know, what is it you're being called to do? You know, how are you being called to be of service to 
help her own yourself to help the community to help the world take that step now that door is open for you um so yeah that's that's an absolutely um brilliant card to come out um and times perfectly uh with with the show so jan do you have any insights or thoughts or last words of wisdom to leave our viewers um again there's still a few more veils to come and we in our own orientation cannot imagine the joy and celebratory nature of what the final co-creation will be we're in process right now and the goal right now is to look to your fellow community members who have lightened up and are prepared to do the work because a lot of the work will not be in this dimension. It's not like we're going to get a hammer and build these centers and communities. Uh, uh, becoming heart-centered, the co-creations will be uh, magically um, manifested in a way that we can't quite imagine yet. But if you just simply go into the inner realms and see it, it'll just give you enough confidence and joy uh, to move towards it. And why not have a beautiful time with your cohorts, colleagues, and fellow angel flock in uh, co-creating that and enjoying the company of loving company who see and know each other. Beautiful, beautiful words. Thank you so, so much for that. So I hope everyone that you've enjoyed this conversation and found it insightful because I know I definitely have and I've learned so much today. So if people want to connect with you, Jan, how do they do that? What's the best way? Um, I have a website and there's lots of links on there to tell you how to get involved with anything I do. The free meditations, the fundraising, everything. And that is sound and Andy. Light healing arts arts dot com sound and light healing arts dot com my phone number's there for text for how to make an appointment uh pretty much anything the queen's caravan which i have a, a red gypsy wagon i sleep in and i go oh, to and i haven't figured out quite how to get it over to england <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that would be amazing well you could do you could always find one in this country that's it. I'll build another one. But I go throughout the United States and I'm always looking for communities to welcome me in, to sit and do events with and appointments. So just contact me. A be beautiful, beautiful. Yes. So, um, so any, anyone watching, um, you know, any of my American audience um, and that, uh, you know, make contact with Jan and get to come to your uh, get to come to your community and do take pictures because I want to see this red caravan. Oh, uh, let me tell you, I've got, I make movies. In fact, go on my website and you can see any of the caravans, the people, the joy, the food. Beautiful. Yeah, definitely, definitely um, uh, check, check that, check that out. And what I will do is I will put the link to your website um, in the comments after, after the show um, so that people can literally just click on it. So they don't need to even type it in. They can go, they can actually go um, right there. So thank you so much, Jan, for sharing your wisdom. It's been absolutely amazing. It has been a pleasure to listen to you. Um, and it was nice hearing the frogs in the background as well. And then that silence as, <laughs> as they came in. That was, that was really, really lovely. So, of course, everyone watching this, if you are now ready to remember your divine presence and step onto your spiritual multidimensional path, but maybe you feel lost, confused, stuck or alone, then please feel free to reach out and connect with me um, so we can see where you are now and how you can move forward to take charge of your destiny so that you can spread your wings and soar. And of course, you can receive a free future life progression recording to discover your destiny by seeing into your future to get guidance and clarity that you can use in your current life, as well as a couple of other free gifts by signing up to my newsletter. And of course, again, thank you so much everyone for watching. And I'd like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more people who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you. 
And of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, then please feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button to be notified of when the show goes live or I post new guided meditations. And of course, you know, I'm hitting subscribe, commenting, sharing, not just my stuff, but um, Jan's stuff. I know she's on YouTube and Instagram, you know, and other people who inspire and give you that guidance that can help other people please do like share comment because it really helps get their message out there with all the algorithms of everything so that in a way we create this web where we you know we just raise the vibration um everywhere that goes along and of course i look forward to you all joining me same time same place next week Take care and thank you for watching. Bye. Thank you.